Hi guys. So we hear a lot about algo trading these days, right? Um, when I started to understand that, it became very clear that there is no way uh, we can currently do that without having access to some sort of a broker API, right? So I mean, that both for market data and you know, uh, an order placement through programs, uh, you need an API uh, of a sort. So now for someone like me who wants to control things, uh, I could buy a broker API and write the algos I'm interested in in a program and using Python or other languages. Um, but uh, however, when I opened an account with Upstock almost a year back, I have struggled to get an API or developer access to its platform. Uh, they say that it is restricted to close group of people, which is very frustrating. Uh, they have never opened it since then. So I wonder why they wouldn't give that access to an honest client like me that has been giving them consistent business over the past one year, right? So, uh, okay, not going into that, I, um, I thought it would be nice if I could build a bot that will do automatic trade trading using um, its web interface itself, right? So, uh, I mean, they display all the information that uh, is needed in a in automated trading, right? As long as you can get um, that inside a program. So sound interesting, right? So basically, I started a project uh, myself. I create started to create a library of code in Python to implement these following things. Uh, these are, you know, inside my Python program should be able to read tickers on per second basis from what it what is displaying in the Upstock's website or web platform. And it should be any ticker, literally, I can add the ticker to on the left hand side uh, of this platform and the program should be able to read it. So I'm not limited to, you know, some of the broker APIs limit you for a particular plan to, you can do for only five NSE tickers, you can do 100 tickers and stuff like that, but uh, it should be a restriction. Uh, whichever ticker I want to uh, implement strategy in, I should be able to use that. And of course, it should be free because uh, we are implementing in our program, right? Uh, second goal is to be able to use the tickers to process a strategy logic and generate alerts. So I think that is probably will be simpler once I'm able to take a ticker inside a program, read it consistently or every second, and then I should be able to run some sort of logic on that. Maybe in RSI, RSI calculate RSI, uh, compare it with something and generate triggers, right? Uh, and the third part would be to be able to place entry and exit trades through the program itself. Uh, now, I tend to implement it like a bot, which is uh, for for those of you who are new to bot concept, uh, it bot is something which acts on humans uh, behalf, right? So if you have to place an order manually, it would take your thoughts, your time uh, to, you know, key in the information and then you will click on the order, but the bot will be much 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 quicker it will almost if not match the speed of an api it will be very very close and much much better than the human uh, angle involved right so you should be able to place orders through the program itself and the program will track the orders and will decide an exit criteria upon which it should place and again an exit order and the trade will be closed right so this is my plan um i'm just to mind, it's an in-progress project and I'm implementing these things in batches, but I want to start sharing what's implemented and get your views uh, so that uh, I can think in all the directions possible. Um, so right now, uh, the part that is implemented already is with part A, which is to read the single or multiple triggers. Today, I ran this test in live market. Um, let's watch. The video is not so pleasant, but I think it will give you a good idea. right? So let's watch this. So Upstock's Botlib is the name of library I am intending to build. Um, I should be able to distribute it to the people so that anybody willing to use its functionality can use it inside those programs, right? This library will require certain variables to be set before sort of using that. Um, and these, some of the variables are only required if you want to log in through the script, uh, but there is a facility you can actually log in manually after the Chrome driver is launched, right? So once you do a launch, 
it will automatically open a uh, web uh, with link to Upstocks Pro login page, right? So this is opened by the launch. Uh, there is a now you may not want to use it, but if you want to use login through the program itself, then you have to declare these variables called user ID, password, and a date of birth and the folder where you want to land your page in, right? So now see it is doing it all automatic. Uh, it landed on a page called SCA, which I mentioned in the T dot folder, right? And if you see these are the scripts or the stickers loaded on the left hand side, so you can add those triggers. Whichever trigger you want to work on the program, you should have those triggers in the left hand side of your uh, web platform, right? So if you, if you want to get a price of trigger like TCS, it won't because it is not there in the left hand side of of the platform right so it is there's no tcs in here right so you have to add that before you can use it as a get price but you can get the price of bank nifty for sure right here and you can also put that in a loop uh, just adding this for understanding because ultimately you would want to use that price in a program on a consistently updated basis right so you can put that in a loop and you can put some logic on this price and some radio triggers right So it can uh, continuously fetch the price from the web platform, right? <coughs> oh, it is not fetching because it's not printing. It's fetching but not printing, right? So you'll have to just print it out. A wrong, a wrong statement in caps. Uh, okay. So now when you print it out, it will just print the prices. It's so fast, right? So you see that before it can uh, the that web platform can actually update it has already fetched nine times right so it's fetching the same price because not being updated uh, during that time so i'll just put a <coughs> sleep timer for one second and let's say every second we'll want to fetch that price so it should change All right so it is changing now it's 25 27 30 32 and this is what you can see right over here right it's just fetching it from here inside your program uh, there might be some it's a kind of say it will be in a beta until I make it a stabilized one but it's still usable right now if you want to right now you can also get not only one ticker but you can get multiple trigger if you want to right if you want to get a put and call price of the same strike or you want to work with multiple let's say you want to work with 10 tickers and decide uh, which of the which is the one getting into the lowest RSI may be going below 30 or something like that. You can use multiple tickers uh, every second or even faster, right? So here I want to get Bank Nifty, Bank Nifty 35,000 CE. So one thing to note is that you have to mention these names exactly as it appear on to the left hand side of your Upstock's web platform. Oops, syntax error. not yet one more bracket right okay so you get them in a list form right uh, in a python list form uh, the number of variables that you place here uh, the price updated price will be written back to you in a list form right so you can use that inside your program so this, this is what I'm saying, exactly it has to match the name, right? When you say bank nifty, bank nifty 3500C, it should match with the space and everything, right? So that's it for this particular part A. Um, so this is implemented perfectly working fine for me. And uh, if you guys want to try it out, uh, I can give you some uh, 